to the Healthcare Executive webinar series presented by myself, Greg Wallstrom. Um, today we'll be developing into an important topic in the realm of healthcare technology. The recent updates to the health data and technology and interoperability, commonly known as HTI-1, as of December 2023. These updates are part of the broader framework of the 21st Century Cures Act, a landmark legislation passed in uh, 2016, 2016. The 21st Century Cures Act was a significant step towards uh, modernizing our healthcare system. It was designed with a vision to accelerate the development of medical products and more importantly, to bring the innovations in healthcare to the public more efficiently and effectively. One of its core objectives has been to enhance patient access to their own health data, fostering a more patient-centered healthcare system. This act also places a strong emphasis on promoting the interoperability of health information systems. This means making different health IT systems and software applications work together seamlessly um, to share, to use, and exchange information regularly. Another key focus of the 21st Century Cures Act has been the secure, secure exchange and use of electronic health information. In our increasingly digital age, protecting sensitive health data while ensuring its accessibility for health improvements is crucial. Uh, lastly, the act encourages innovation in healthcare technology uh, sector, paving the way for new tools and systems um, that can transform healthcare delivery. Um, now, why is HTI-1 update so important? Well, uh, the update represents a significant milestone in health IT. Um, it, sets the, it sets to transform how healthcare delivery is managed um, by improving uh, data sharing capabilities and the utilization of technology in healthcare. Um, it also paves, plays a pivotal role in advancing patient care um, by enhancing access to health data uh, and supporting the effective use of AI and predictive analytics in health IT, uh, the HTI-1 update aims to bring a more uh, efficient and accurate and patient-focused uh, healthcare system. Uh, lastly, um, an understanding of the HTI-1 update is crucial for compliance uh, and, and ad adaptation. Um, healthcare providers uh, IT developers and other stakeholders in the healthcare sector uh, need to be well versed within these uh, regulatory changes. This knowledge uh, is essential uh, not just for compliance but also for optimizing healthcare delivery in this uh, new digital era. <clears throat> so, in today's session, we'll explore all the aspects in detail. Um, ensuring that we all have a uh, comprehensive understanding of the HTI-1 update um, and its implications. So let's take a look at our agenda for today's session, uh, which will guide us through uh, various facets of the HTI-1 update uh, and its implications in the healthcare sector. Uh, first, we'll start with the background and overview of the 21st Century Cures Act. Uh, this will guide us with a historical context and help us understand the key objectives and provisions of the act, uh, setting the stage for our discussion uh, for the HTI-1 update. Uh, next, we'll dive into an introduction into the HTI-1 rule. Uh, here we'll define what HTI-1 
is and uh, discuss its significance and role in the realm of health IT. Moving forward, we'll explore the topic of algorithm transparency in health IT. We'll discuss the new requirements for AI and predictive algorithms and how they impact clinical decision making. Then we'll talk about the adoption of the USCDI version 3, detailing the changes and enhancements from previous versions and its implementation timeline and uh, implications. After that, we'll delve into the revised information blocking requirements. We'll look at what constitutes information blocking and the enhanced requirements and the exceptions. We'll also cover the interoperability focused reporting metrics, focusing on the new reporting requirements for health IT uh, developers and insights into how certified health IT is being used. Following that, we'll discuss provider disincentives for information blocking, where we'll overview the disincentives and their impact in enforcement in healthcare. Then we'll examine the implications for healthcare providers and patients, especially how these, cha how these changes affect uh, access to health data and also uh, patient care and privacy. Uh, as we near the end, we'll look at the future direction and compliance strategies, uh, discussing upcoming regulatory updates and providing compliance tips for providers and developers. Um, and finally, we'll have a question and answer session uh, where I'll encourage you to ask questions and engage in an open discussion. And to conclude, we'll wrap up with our conclusion and key takeaways. Uh, summarizing the major points of our session and sharing some final thoughts. So I hope this session will be informative and engaging for all of you. So let's begin with an in-depth look at the 21st Century Cures Act. As we begin our journey into understanding the HTI-1 update, um, it's crucial to first grasp the foundation upon which it was built. So the, 21 first, the 21st uh, Century's Cures Act, it was enacted in 2016, and this groundbreaking legislation marked a significant milestone in healthcare innovation and technology. Uh, the Cures Act was brought into existence uh, with a primary objective, and that was accelerating the development of medical products and introducing new innovations in healthcare. Um, notably, uh, that act received bipartisan support and, and reflecting a unified commitment to advancing healthcare technology and research across po political lines. Um, now let's explore the key objectives of the act. Uh, first, enhancing patient access to health data. This aspect of the act is about empowering patients. It ensures that patients have access easier access to their own health information. And the idea is to make patients' data more portable and accessible no matter where the patient goes, uh, which healthcare platform they use. Uh, next, promoting interoperability of health systems. Uh, the Act encourages development and use of health information systems that uh, can exchange data seamlessly. And a critical focus here is to reduce information blocking, essentially uh, practices that prevent or discourage the sharing of electronic health information and enhance uh, data sharing across different health IT platforms. Uh, the third objective is supporting the secure exchange and use of electronic health information, uh, or EHI. Uh, in our digital age, the security and privacy of patient data is paramount, and the Act uh, sets standards for how this uh, data should be handled and transmitted securely, ensuring that uh, patients' information is protected. Lastly, encouraging innovation in uh, health technology and digital health, and this is where the Act fosters uh, the development of new health technologies. We're talking about digital tools, software, and other innovations that can revolutionize healthcare 
improving uh, patient outcomes and the way health uh, care is delivered. Understanding these objectives uh, help us comprehend the landscape into which the HTI-1 update is introduced and why it's so crucial in the context of modern health care. In this slide, we'll navigate through the major uh, provisions of the 21st Century Cures Act and uh, understand its transformative impact on the healthcare landscape. First, let's talk about the advancement in medical uh, product development. A critical provision of the act is focusing on streamlining the process for developing and, um, and improving the new drugs and medical uh, devices. It's not just about making these processes faster, it's about making them smarter. The act encourages the use of innovative clinical designs and the incorporation of real world evidence. This means new treatments uh, can reach patients quicker and more efficiently than ever before. Uh, secondly, the act signifies boosting funding for medical research. It allocates funds for critical areas like the Cancer Moonshot Program, uh, Precision Medicine, and Neuroscience. Uh, the funding is vital for groundbreaking research, leading to discoveries and treatments that can save lives. Thirdly, we have mental health and substance use policy reforms. Uh, the aspect of this act addresses some of the mo most impressing uh, challenges in healthcare today. It, it includes measures uh, which improve mental health and service delivery, substance use disorder treatments, uh, expands mental health care availability, and addresses the critical issue of opiate addiction. Fourth and very crucial is the focus of information blocking and health IT certification. And the act prohibits practices that un reasonably block sharing of electronic health information. It also updates um, the health IT certification program, ensuring that systems comply with interoperability standards, which is uh, pivotal for seamless data exchange. Now let's consider the impacts of these provisions on healthcare. Uh, enhanced patient care and safety. Uh, by improving access to new treatments and promoting better data sharing and analytics, patient care becomes more uh, effective and safer. Uh, increased innovation in healthcare technology. The act is a driving force behind innovation in health, uh, digital health. It leads to the development of new tools and platforms that enhance patient engagement and outcomes as well as greater collaboration in uh, healthcare research. Uh, the uh, X funding and policies encourage collaborative efforts in medical research, uh, advancing our understanding and treatment of various conditions. Uh, shifting towards value-based care, it promotes a more coordinated approach to healthcare, uh, focusing on outcomes and patient experience. Uh, the shifts towards value-based care is pivotal in improving the overall quality of uh, healthcare services. Uh, understanding these provisions and their impacts is the key to uh, appreciating the backdrop against which the HTI-1 update is set. Um, as we uncover the intricacies of the 21st Century Cures Act, let's turn our attention over to some more uh, its most significant updates, and that would be the HTI-1 rule, which stands for Health Data Technology and Interoperability 1. Uh, it is the HTI-1 rule. What is it, and what is its purpose? And the HTI-1 rule is really a groundbreaking regulation introduced to advance patient access, uh, interoperability, and standards within the health IT ecosystem. Um, it's a comprehensive approach to enhance on how health data is shared and used and uh, protected. Uh, so let's break down the key components of the HTI-1 rule. Uh, firstly, uh, 
algorithm transparency. Uh, this component is particularly uh, crucial in the era of AI and uh, machine learning. The rule uh, establishes transparency uh, requirements for AI and predictive al algorithms used in health uh, IT. Uh, the goal here is to ensure that these algorithms are fair and appropriate and also safe, uh, particularly in their decision-making processes. <clears throat> uh, next, the adoption of the USCDI version. Uh, this uh, refers to the integration of the United States core data for interoperability uh, version 3 uh, as a new standard. It's uh, focused on enhancing patient characteristic data, uh, which is the vital for uh, promoting health uh, equal equity and uh, supporting public health data interoperability. So uh, then we have the enhanced information blocking requirements. And this is part of the rule revises the definition and ex exceptions related to information blocking. Um, it's about supporting more effective information sharing and providing clarity to stakeholders on the regulations. Uh, uh, number four, lastly, uh, interoperability uh, focused uh, reporting metrics. This involves implementing new uh, reporting metrics for developers of certified health IT. Uh, these metrics are designed to provide insights on how this technology is being used to support care delivery. Uh, now, uh, what is the role of the HTI-1 uh, rule in health IT? Well, it's multifaceted. Uh, facilitating better patient outcomes by improving the accessibility and the usage of health data. Uh, it leads to more informed health care decisions. Uh, driving health care innovation. Uh, the rule fosters that the development of new technologies and standards in health IT uh, paving the way for future advancements. Um, ensuring transparency and compliance. Um, it offers a clear regulatory framework, particularly in the responsible uh, use of AI in healthcare, which is crucial for maintaining trust and efficacy. In essence, the HTI-1 rule is a leap forward in our journey towards a more integrated, uh, transparent, and patient-centered health IT landscape. Uh, today, as we navigate through the realms of health IT, one of the most critical aspects we encounter is algorithm transparency, and especially as it out, it's outlined in the HTI-1 rule. So let's, um, let's, let's unpack this concept and understand its significance in healthcare. Uh, why is it algorithm transparency uh, in, important? Um, at its core, transparency is healthcare uh, and healthcare alg algorithms is about uh, building trust and reliability. Uh, it's crucial that AI and predictive algorithms um, increasingly used in healthcare are not just uh, but trustworthy, but also reliable. Uh, this is not just about the efficiency of these systems, but more importantly about patient safety. Um, ensuring that technology aids rather than hinders healthcare decisions is paramount. Um, now let's explore the keys of algorithm transparency and HTI-1 uh, rule. Uh, firstly, transparency requirements. So the rule mandates that developers of certified health IT uh, disclose specific information about algorith algorithms that they use. So this includes details about the design, functionality, and limitations of these algorithms. Uh, such disclosure is vital for understanding on how these tools work and their potential impact on patient care. Uh, secondly, assessment of algorithms. Uh, the HTI-1 rule encourages clinical users to assess algorithms for several critical factors, and that would be fairness, appropriateness, validity, effectiveness, and safety. Uh, this assessment is essential for ensuring that those algorithms are used in the best interest of patient care and decision making. However, there are challenges to consider. 
And the complexity of AI systems can make understanding and explaining AI decisions a daunting task. Addressing this requires continuous monitoring and updating of these systems and adapting to involving standards and patient care needs. So what does this mean for healthcare providers and patients? For healthcare providers, enhanced decision making is a key benefit. They're supported with more transparent and informed uh, tools, enabling better healthcare delivery. For patients, this transparency translates into greater trust and engagement in their care. And knowing that technology used in their care is safe, fair, and effective can significantly improve their healthcare experience. In essence, algorithm transparency, as outlined in HTI 1 rule, is a cr crucial step towards a more ethical and reliable and patient centric use of technology in healthcare. Now let's turn our focus to a significant component of the HTI 1 rule. So the adoption of the USCDI version 3, uh, the USCDI or the United States Core Data for Interoperability is a standard that defines a set of health data elements essential for health information exchange. So version 3 represents the latest advancement in these standards. So what are the key updates in the USEDI version 3? First, uh, firstly, enhanced data elements. The version introduces new data elements, expanding the scope of what constitutes a comprehensive health record. This includes advancements in capturing patient social determinants of health, clinical notes, and other health or critical health information. Uh, these additions are crucial for creating a more holistic view of patient health. Secondly, improve data interoperability. USCDI version 3 facilitates better data exchange between diverse health IT systems, and this is a significant step towards streamlining the process of data sharing across healthcare providers. Ensuring that critical health information is readily accessible where and when it is, it's needed. Uh, what is important for healthcare? Uh, the adoption of the USCDI version 3 is pivotal in promoting health equity. By capturing a broader range of patient data, including crucial social determinants of health, we can provide more personalized and effective uh, healthcare. And it also plays a significant role in supporting public health. Uh, the enhanced uh, data elements aided in uh, public health surveillance and research, uh, enabling uh, better tracking of health trends and outcomes. So let's talk about the implementation timeline and its implications. Uh, the effective date for this new standard is set for January 1st, 2026 giving healthcare providers and IT providers and developers time to uh, adapt to these changes. Uh, for healthcare providers, this means updating the systems and training uh, staff to utilize these enhanced data elements effectively. Um, it's not just about complying with a new standard, but it's also about lever leveraging it to improve patient care. So in summary, the adoption of the USCDI version 3 under the HTI 1 rule marks a significant step in advancing health data standards uh, with far-reaching implications for healthcare delivery research and public health. In this segment of our presentation, we'll explore the advanced information blocking requirements, uh, a crucial aspect of the HTI 1 rule. Uh, understanding these changes is key to how health information is shared and used across different platforms. First, let's define what we mean by information blocking. It refers to the practice that interferes with, prevents, or materially discourages access to, exchange, or use of electronic health information known as EHI. 
So the primary objective here is to ensure that EHI is not just accessible, but also be exchanged effortlessly across different health IT systems. So what are the key updates in these information blocking uh, requirements? We have revised uh, definitions and exceptions, and the HTI-1 rule brings clarity to what constitutes information blocking. Uh, it introduces new exceptions and revises existing ones to provide a clearer understanding for uh, all stakeholders involved. Uh, this is in crucial healthcare. This is crucial for healthcare providers. Um, IT developers and health information exchange exchanges to align their practices with the the new updated rule. Uh, then there's the enhanced compliance and enforcement, and the rule sets out specific requirements and details the enforcement mechanisms. Um, it is important to note that there are potential penalties uh, for information blocking. Uh, emphasizing the seriousness in which uh, these regulations are being approached. However, uh, there are challenges to consider uh, adapting to new regulations. Healthcare entities and IT developers must understand and implement these uh, revised requirements and exceptions, uh, which have been, which can definitely be a complex uh, process. Uh, training and awareness, ensuring that everyone involved from healthcare providers to IT professionals is is aware of and understands, you know, these changes are essential for uh, smooth implementation. Uh, what does this mean for healthcare providers and patients? For healthcare providers, it means improved data sharing. Um, these uh, requirements facilitate a more seamless and efficient exchange of health information, uh, enhancing the quality of care. For patients, uh, this translates into empowering patients, enhancing access to their own health data, con which contributes to making better informed healthcare decisions. Uh, it also allows uh, for fostering a more patient centered. Uh, approach to uh, healthcare. In summary, uh, the enhanced information blocking requirements under this new HTI-1 rule are new to create a more open, transparent, and in an efficient environment for sharing and uh, use of electronic health information. Uh, so let's talk about another critical aspect of the HTI-1 rule, uh, the interoperability-focused uh, reporting metrics. Uh, these metrics are a new requirement for developers of certified health IT, uh, aimed at enhancing the interoperability and effectiveness of these technologies in healthcare. Uh, what are these reporting metrics and why are they so important? Uh, the, the purpose of these metrics is to provide a valuable insight into how certified health IT products are used in healthcare setting, uh, settings and their effectiveness in supporting uh, care delivery. Uh, by requiring developers to report specific metrics, uh, the rule aims to uh, gain a clear understanding of the practical impacts and the interoperability of these technologies. So let's take a look at some of these key metrics for reporting. Uh, first, we'll have usage, usage metrics. Uh, this involves data on the frequency and ways in which certified health IT products are utilized in healthcare settings. Uh, this information is crucial for understanding the real world impact of these technologies on healthcare delivery. Uh, next, interoperability metrics. Uh, this includes information about the data exchange and integration uh, capabilities of health IT systems. Uh, the focus here is on evaluating the effectiveness of these systems and sharing data across different platforms. Um, however, implementing these metrics with 
uh, comes with its challenges, and that's data collection and analysis. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is setting up these systems that can efficient, efficiently collect, manage, and analyze the relevant data. So continuous improvement, it's not just about collecting data, it's also about using these metrics for ongoing evaluation and the enhancement of health IT interoperability. So what is the impact of these reporting metrics on health IT and development and usage? Well, for developers, it means enhanced product development. And these metrics can inform them about areas that need to have improvement or innovation in their products. And for healthcare providers, it translates into improved healthcare delivery. Understanding the benefits and limitations of health IT tools through these metrics leads to informed, better uh, informed decisions about technology and adoption and usage. And in summary, the introduction of interoperability focused reporting metrics in the HGI-1 rule is a significant step towards a more interconnected and efficient IT ecosystem. In this part of the discussion, uh, we're going to focus on a crucial aspect of the HTI-1 rule, the provider disincentives uh, for information blocking. This is a significant measure introduced and addressed and discouraged practices that impede the free flow of electronic health information or EHI. So what are exactly are these provider disincentives? and why are they important? Um, the primary purpose of these disincentives is to penalize and thus deter practices that con constitute information blocking. So this applies particularly to healthcare providers who engage in actions that hinder the access, exchange, or use of EHI. Uh, let's take a look into the key elements of these provider disincentives. So first, the nature of disincentives. Uh, these can include financial penalties or corrective action plans for those who are found non-compliant. Non uh, furthermore, engaging in information blocking practices can have a significant impact on providers' participation in federal health care programs. Uh, next, the criteria for enforcement. Uh, the enforcement of these disincentives is based on the severity and the impact of the information blocking practices. Determinations are made uh, following investigations and findings by relevant authorities, such as the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, ONC, and the Office of the Inspector General, OIG. However, these uh, disincentives come with challenges and the need for compliance strategies. Understanding regulations is crucial. Healthcare providers need to have a comprehensive knowledge of what constitutes information uh, blocking. Uh, implementing best practices involves establishing the internal protocols um, and training to ensure that all actions are, are in compliance and and do not inadvertently lead to information blocking. Um, uh, what is the impact of these disincentives on healthcare providers and systems? Well, they promote uh, responsible data sharing by encouraging healthcare providers to adopt practices that support uh, the seamless exchange of EHI. Uh, they advance transparency and accountability in the healthcare ecosystem. Um, by holding providers accountable for their actions, these disincentives foster a more uh, open and trustworthy healthcare environment. Uh, in essence, the introduction of uh, provider disincentives for information blocking in the HTI-1 rule uh, is a step forward in ensuring that healthcare providers engage in practices that support the broader goals of healthcare interoperability um, and patient access to information. As we explore the HTI-1 rule and its various components, it's crucial to understand how 
these changes will impact uh, both healthcare providers and patients. Uh, the HTI-1 rule is not just about regulatory compliance, it's about transforming healthcare for the better. And first, let's consider the implication for the healthcare providers. So adaptation to the new standards is key. Uh, providing new, new ways needed to navigate and integrate updates like the USCDI version 3 and revised information blocking regulations into their existing systems. Uh, this might involve updating technologies, uh, processes, and staff training. Um, enhanced responsibility is another critical aspect. Healthcare providers now have greater accountability in ensuring uh, the secure and efficiency use of electronic health information and in preventing uh, information blocking. Uh, additionally, there are opportunities for improvement. Insights for interoperability focused reporting metrics can be used uh, to enhance health IT solutions and patient care, driving improvements in healthcare delivery. Uh, now let's take a look at the implications for patients. One of the most significant impacts is improved access to health information. Patients will have easier and more comprehensive access to their personal health records, which is vital for informed healthcare decisions. Uh, this leads to the increased engagement in healthcare decisions. Uh, with better access and understanding their health data, patients can more uh, actively involve, be more actively involved in managing their health and making decisions about their care. So furthermore, there is an aspect of trust and transparency in healthcare. Uh, the transparency of the use of AI and prediction algorithms as mandated by the rule uh, can increase patient trust in the healthcare system, uh, knowing that their care is backed by reliable and ethical uh, technologies. So overall, the impact of the HTI-1 rule is multifaceted. Uh, we're looking at a shift towards a more interconnected system, and the rule encourages uh, seamlessly uh, exchanging and use of health data across different platforms and entities, uh, which is essential for a more integrated approach to healthcare. Um, it also is about driving innovation in health IT. The rule motivates the development of a more sophisticated and user friendly and interoperable health IT solution. Uh, most importantly, it also promotes patient centered care by prioritizing patients' needs and preferences. The, the HTI 1 rule helps making healthcare uh, more patient focused, uh, responsive, and, and effective. In summary, the HTI-1 rule represents a significant step toward, for, towards uh, creating a more interconnected, uh, innovative, and patient-centered healthcare environment. So as we near the end of our discussion for the HTI-1 rule, it is important to look forward and consider the future directions in health IT and regulation, and as well as the strategies for compliance. Uh, firstly, the future directions in health IT and regulations, we can expect the continued evolution of healthcare standards. Um, the field of healthcare IT and is dynamic and standards for data and interoperability will continue to update and enhance. And staying abreast of these changes is crucial for all healthcare entities. And another key aspect is increasing the increasing role of AI in digital health. The integration of artificial intelligence and machine learning and digital health tools and healthcare delivery is set to expand, bringing new opportunities and challenges. Um, now let's talk about compliance strategies for healthcare entities, uh, regulatory policy reviews and updates, which are essential. Um, it's important to stay updated with regulatory changes and that uh, ensure that internal policies are aligned with the latest standards. Uh, this involves the active involvement of legal and compliance teams. Investment in uh, technology and training is another key strategy. 
uh, updating health IT systems to comply with new standards like USCDI version 3 and providing training for staff are imperative steps to effective usage uh, of these systems. So a proactive approach to information sharing is vital. Uh, healthcare entities should foster a culture that prioritizes the open and efficient sharing of electronic health information um, and implement best practices uh, to avoid information blocking. Uh, the implications uh, of these developments for healthcare providers and patients are significant. Uh, for p providers, uh, there's the necessity to adapt to changing technology um, and regulations to provide optimal care. Uh, for patients, these changes can uh, mean greater empowerment and involvement in their healthcare journey. In preparing for the future, staying informed and agile is the key. Uh, keeping abreast of developments in health IT and regulations will be crucial for all stakeholders in the healthcare sector. Building collaboration. Uh, networking is also important. Engaging with health IT experts, policymakers, and other stakeholders can lead to shared learning and more uh, effective compliance. In conclusion, adapting to the health uh, HTI-1 rule and its implications is not just about meeting regulatory uh, requirements, it's about moving towards a more efficient patient-centered and technologically advanced healthcare system. So as we wrap up this informative session on the HTI-1 rule and its impact on healthcare, I'd like to open up the floor for any questions that you might have. Uh, this is a great opportunity to cover any aspects of today's discussion that you'd like to explore further. I encourage you to engage in this dialogue and whether you have a question, need clarification, or wish to share a perspective, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, your insights and queries are valuable to enrich our discussion. Um, a few guidelines to make our Q&A session productive uh, when raising your question, but uh, please state concisely and clearly. Uh, this will help me to understand and address your query more effectively. Let's uh, try to keep our questions focused on relevant topics. Uh, we're here to discuss the HTI-1 rule, its components, and its implications for healthcare. Uh, questions that align with these topics will be most beneficial for everyone. And lastly, let's maintain a respectful and constructive tone in our, in our interaction. Uh, we'll all benefit from a positive and courteous exchange of ideas. After the uh, question and answer, uh, I'll offer some final thoughts and clarifications to summarize key points for our session. And I want to thank you in advance for your participation and engagement. So let's begin our Q&A. Um, who would like to ask the first question? What does HGI-1 stand for? Um, HGI-1 stands for Health, Data, Technology, and Interoperability. It's a rule implemented to advance patient access, interoperability, and standards in health. Okay, what's next? Um, how does the HGI-1 rule impact algorithm transparency? Uh, the the HGI-1 rule establishes transparency requirements for AI and predictive algorithms and certified health IT. So it aims to ensure fairness, appropriateness, and safety in these algorithms, uh, making more tr making more trustworthy and re reliability. Um, what is the U USCDI version 3 and why is it important? Uh, really great question. Thanks for asking. Um, the USCDI version 3 refers to the United States Core Data for Interoperability version 3. 
Um, it's important because it introduces enhanced data elements um, and improves data interoperability and facilitating better patient care and, and health equity. What are the challenges healthcare providers may face due to the HTI-1 rule? Uh, providers face, may face challenges like adapting to new standards, understanding and complying with the updated information blocking regulations, uh, and investing in technology and training to meet these uh, new requirements. How does the HTI-1 rule benefit patients? Uh, patients benefit from improved access to their health information, uh, increased engagement in healthcare decisions, um, a greater trust in the healthcare system due to enhanced transparency, um, especially in, in AI use. Uh, what are some of the compliance strategies for healthcare entities regarding the HGI-1 rule? Uh, compliance strategies include regular policy reviews and updates, uh, investment in technology and staff training, uh, adopting a proactive approach in information sharing uh, to align with the HTI-1 rule. Um, can you explain the provider disincentives for information blocking? Uh, provider disincentives under the HTI-1 rule are penalties for healthcare providers who engage in information blocking. Uh, these can include uh, financial penalties or corrective actions um, and are designed to encourage responsible data sharing. Uh, what future directions do you foresee in healthcare post HTI-1? Uh, future directions include ongoing updates to health data standards, uh, increased integration of AI and healthcare and continuous evolution in, in digital health tools and regulations. Really good question. Um, how will the HTI-1 rule change healthcare IT development and usage? Um, it's it's going to drive the development of more advanced interoperable health IT solutions and also encourage uh, healthcare providers to use these technologies more effectively for patient care. What does the implementation of interoperability focused reporting metrics entail? Ooh, that's a good question. These are some good questions. Um, it involves uh, healthcare IT developers reporting specific metrics uh, related to the usage of interoperability and, and their products. Uh, this data helps in understanding the effectiveness of these technologies in healthcare settings and guides uh, continuous improvement. So what is the primary objective of the 21st Century Cures Act? Well, the primary uh, objective is to accelerate medical product development and bring new in innovation into healthcare to patients more efficiently and emphasizing the importance of health data and access and interoperability. Um, how does the HGI-1 rule redefine information blocking? How does the HGI-1 rule redefine information blocking? Um, the HGI-1 rule revises definitions and exceptions related to information blocking. So clarifying what constitutes information blocking and offering guidelines to avoid uh, those such practices. Uh, what role does AI play under the HGI-1 rule? While AI plays a crucial role in advancing healthcare delivery, uh, with the HGI-1 rule establishing requirements for transparency and ethical use of AI and predictive algorithms in uh, health IT. So can you explain um, the concept of USCDI and its relevance in the HGI-1 rule? Um, the HSCDI, or the United States Core Data Inter uh, for Interoperability, is a set, set of standards standard data elements essential for information exchange. So its relevance in the HGI-1 rule lies in its latest version, uh, 
which enhances the scope and quality of the data in the health IT systems. What are the potential impacts of the HGI-1 rule on medical research? Uh, the HGI-1 rule could uh, positively impact medical research by facilitating better data sharing and interoperability, so leading to more comprehensive data collection and analysis for research purposes. How might healthcare providers need to change their practices due to the HGI-1 rule? Uh, providers might need to update their health IT systems, um, adapt to new data sharing standards, um, enhancing patient data access, uh, and ensuring compliance with revised information blocking regulations. What does the future of patient engagement look like under the HGI-1 rule? Patient engagement. Uh, the future of patient engagement is likely to be more dynamic with patients uh, having greater access to their health data and being more involved in their healthcare decisions. Thanks to improved uh, data and transparency and accessibility. So how does the HGI-1 rule update affect healthcare IT certification? Uh, the updates affect health IT certification by requiring compliance uh, with new interop interoperability standards and practices like adherence to the USCDI version 3 uh, and demonstration of the transparent algorithm usage. Uh, what kinds of penalties or disincentives can be imposed for information blocking? Uh, penalties can include financial fines, corrective action plans, and possible impacts on participation in federal health care programs for entities found guilty of information blocking. Uh, and I think we got time for one more question. Um, what should health care providers prioritize to effectively adapt to the HGI-1 rule? Um, health care providers should prioritize understanding uh, the new regulations. Uh, they should also in, uh, be investing in compliant healthcare IT infrastructure. Uh, also, training staff on these changes and fostering a culture of open information sharing and transparency. Um, as we come to the end of our session, I'd like to recap some of the crucial points that we discussed about the HTI 1 rule, uh, its impact on healthcare. Uh, first, a brief summary of the HTI-1 rule. Uh, the HTI-1 rule is a significant update under the, 21, uh, the 21st Century Cures Act, uh, focusing on advancing patient access, interoperability, and health IT standards. Uh, it encompasses key components such as tra algorithm transparency, the adoption of USCDI version 3, uh, enhancing information blocking requirements, and uh, interoperability focusing on reporting metrics. So now let's reflect on our key takeaways from today. Uh, enhanced transparency and patient access. One of the most significant impacts of the HTI-1 rule uh, is the promotion of a more transparent healthcare system, especially in the use of AI. It also significantly enhances patient access to their own health data, empowering them uh, in their healthcare journey. Uh, promotion of interoperability and inv innovation. Uh, the rule encourages seamless data exchange across different health IT platforms and fosters innovation in health IT development, which is critical for the future of healthcare. Uh, great accountability in healthcare. Uh, with the in, an introduction of disincentives for information blocking, there is a clear emphasis on the need for responsible uh, data sharing and greater accountability within the healthcare system. Uh, looking ahead, what we should focus on, um, the healthcare sector must engage in, in continuous adaptation and compliance and staying informed and uh, adapting to the ongoing regulatory uh, chal challenges and changes is key for healthcare entities. 
Uh, furthermore, the HGI-1 rule underscores the shift towards a patient-centered health uh, healthcare focus, and this means prioritizing patients' needs and preferences in healthcare delivery and decision-making. So in closing, um, I'd like to encourage everyone to embrace change and collaboration. The uh, advancements and changes we've discussed today are not just ch challenges, but opportunities. Uh, to improve healthcare delivery and to innovate um, and to work together towards a more efficient and transparent and uh, patient focused uh, healthcare system. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for your active participation and engaging into uh, today's session. Your insights and questions have been invaluable. Uh, today, we will uh, navigate these changes and continue to improve healthcare for all. As I conclude today's session, I wanted to thank, uh, I wanted to leave you with some valuable resources and references for those of you who are interested in uh, deepening your understanding, understanding of the health uh, HTI-1 rule and its related topics in healthcare IT. So firstly, for official documentation and in-depth in uh, analysis, I would highly recommend referring you to the office, uh, uh, the official documentation of the HTI-1 rule provided by the Office of the National Coordinator for uh, Healthcare Information Technology, or ONC. Um, here you'll find detailed insights and the full regulatory uh, guidelines. Uh, for a broader context, explore the 21st Century Secure Act overview. Uh, it offers a comprehensive information about the act, its objectives, and uh, what it means for the future of healthcare. Additionally, the USCDI version 3 resources provide an in depth uh, explanation and analysis of the latest updates to the United States Core Data for Interoperability. Uh, for those of you enjoying uh, staying up to date with uh, current discussions and research, uh, check out various health IT journals and publications. They are a treasure trove uh, for the latest research and studies and updates in the field of health IT. Also, healthcare policy blogs and forums can be an excellent platform uh, for engaging in discussions and uh, gaining insights on the uh, ever-evolving landscape of healthcare policy and technology. Networking and professional development opportunities. Uh, joining health IT professional associations can also offer uh, networking and educational opportunities uh, with other professional professionals in, uh, in your field. Uh, if you're interested in policy advocacy, uh, healthcare policy advocacy groups, resources, and avenues to uh, understand and engage healthcare policy reform and advocacy, and for those of you who prefer structured learning, there are numerous webinars and online courses available uh, that cover a range of topics from health IT to data interoperability and healthcare regulations. Also keep an eye out for workshops and conferences. Uh, they're great opportunities for learning and networking and staying abreast of the latest trends and innovations in healthcare technology. Um, I hope these resources will be helpful to you and as you continue to explore and understand the complex world of health IT and healthcare regulations, remember staying that informed and engaged is the key to navigating these effective uh, changes effectively. Uh, as, as we bring our session to a close, I just wanted to ensure that the conversation doesn't end here. So should you have any further questions, ideas, or wish to discuss anything related to uh, health IT and healthcare policy, uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, here's my contact information. Uh, my name is Greg Wallstrom, and I hold the position of President and Chief Executive Officer at the Healthcare Executive. Uh, you can reach me via email at info at thehealthcareexecutive.net. Also, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash Greg Wallstrom, uh, where I share insights and updates related to the, our field in healthcare management. 
Uh, for those who prefer a scheduled conversation, my office hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, but I am flexible and willing to accommodate other times as needed. My preferred method of communication is email, but I'm open to channels that uh, work best for you. I'm also open to various forms of collaboration, uh, where it's a professional discussion, a collaborative project, or consulting opportunities. Um, I do welcome the chance to work together. Uh, additionally, I'll be involved in future events and presentations. So if you're interested in similar topics, uh, please stay tuned for upcoming talks and webinars and workshops. Um, in closing, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to uh, your active participation and engagement uh, today. Your insights and questions have enriched our discussion immensely, and I encourage you to reach out, whether it's a follow-up uh, for today's questions or a new idea that you'd like to explore. Um, I'm here to engage and collaborate. Uh, so once again, thank you, and I look forward to the possibility of future interactions. As uh, we conclude our session, I just wanted to take a moment to extend my heartfelt gratitude and acknowledgement and contributions of many who uh, have made this presentation possible. Firstly, to the collaborators and team members, your dedication and insight and hard work has been instrumental in bringing uh, to today's session to light. Uh, the collaborative spirit within our team has been a cornerstone of our success and a special thank you to the healthcare executive uh, your support and resources have been invaluable in facilitating this informational session. Uh, it's through you, this organizational backing that we can engage in such meaningful discussions. And regarding the credits and information and resources, uh, the data and research that was formed, uh, the backbone of this presentation, uh, were sourced from key health IT guidelines and medical journals and policy uh, documents. Uh, their invaluable contribution to the healthcare IT and policy uh, have really enriched our discussion today. And I would like to acknowledge the creators of the visuals and the graphics used in uh, this presentation. Their work has uh, significantly enhanced our understanding and engagement uh, with the content. Um, as we conclude our uh, se session today, I just wanna take the moment to express our gratitude for everyone uh, and for everyone who joined us today, uh, your presence and engagement and the insights you shared have been invaluable richness of our discussion. And the active participation has truly enriched the experience for all of us. Uh, the questions that you've asked and the perspectives that you shared reflect the collective commitment to our shared uh, advancement in the field of healthcare IT and healthcare policy. And I encourage each of you to continue this path and exploration and learning. Uh, the world of health IT is ever evolving and there's always new and exciting uh, excitement on the horizon. So please stay curious, stay informed, and more importantly, stay involved. Uh, don't forget to like, sh uh, hit the like and share button. As a reminder, this webinar is uh, copywritten 2024, the healthcare executive.